Sean Hannity of Fox News, otherwise known as Fraud Hannity, he went on an anti-media rant that is so ironic. I don't know how he said the things that you're going to see him say with a straight face because he's going to complain about media bias. He's going to complain about other news pundits shilling for political parties, not even kidding. And he's going to say all of this while not acknowledging that he's the biggest shill and political hack in America, hands down. I don't think you're going to find a bigger media hack than Sean Hannity, but he's going to pretend as if, you know, this is a problem that affects everyone else, but uh, not him. Let's watch. Now, if it were up to the so-called journalists, there are none in the mainstream media, none of this would ever get reported. Biden would never be fully vetted, just like in 2008 with Barack Obama. Remember, this show investigated Obama's ties to, yeah, okay, unrepentant domestic terrorists, Bernadine Dorn, Bill Ayers. It was us on this show that were digging into his deep personal connection to Reverend Wright, the Church of GD America, and black liberation theology that so inspired him, and Acorn and Alinsky and community organizing and even the Chum Gang and so much more. And remember, throughout his presidency, it was really up to us to cover his scandal plague administration because, well, journalism's dead and it's been buried quite a while, unfortunately. And most of the members of the media are nothing more than shills and an extension of the Democratic Party. They don't care about you, we the people. Things have improved so much under Donald Trump and they hate him. Why wouldn't they be championing success for the American people first? Interesting question. Now, this was perfectly exemplified during the president's recent trips to South Korea. Paid very close attention. All right, the president goes to the DMZ. President Trump met quickly after he tweeted out to North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. Became the first sitting U.S. president to cross the DMZ. President Trump, let's see, he offered no concessions to North Korea. He Sanctions are still very much in place. In other words, President Trump did not try to bribe the North Korean regime like Bill Clinton did with your money in the mid-90s and tell us this is a good deal for the American people. Nor did President Trump drop $150 billion in cash and other currency on a tarmac to mullahs in Iran like Biden and Obama did during their failed Iranian nuclear deal. No, this president won't try to appease, bribe dictators, but he also hates unnecessary wars. So that's about all that I can stomach of Sean Hannity. Once we get past like, you know, three minutes, I start to get physically ill hearing this dipshit speak. But think about what he's saying. This president is altruistic. He just wants to, you know, stop unnecessary wars. He's saying this while not acknowledging that just a couple of weeks ago, we were this close to war with Iran, this close. And why were we this close? Specifically because Donald Trump has continuously escalated with Iran. He withdrew from the Iran deal, reimposed sanctions. We were this close because he kept poking them. So spare me this speech about how he wants to end unnecessary wars. He's the commander in chief. If he wants to bring the troops home from Syria and Afghanistan, he could do it right now like that. But he's choosing to not do it because he is easily influenced by neocons in his own administration that he chose to hire. So spare me, Sean. Additionally, uh, Sean Hannity says this president won't try to appease, bribe dictators. He says this after Trump just last year refused to cut off an arms deal to Saudi Arabia when he knows the weapons we're selling to them will be used on children in Yemen. And this comes after Saudi Arabia was proven to have murdered a journalist. So he's not going to bribe and appease dictators? Are you sure about that? Are you really sure about that, Sean? Because being up the ass of Saudi Arabia 24-7? I don't know what you would call that other than appeasing dictators. They are a totalitarian regime where women are third-class citizens. He's going out of his way to appease them. So, I mean, what do you call that? But we have to remember, this is Sean Hannity. And this is his Trumpy we're talking about. So his Trumpy would never do anything wrong. Heart emoji. What a fucking fraud and a hack. But here's where the irony really comes in. The crux of his problem here with mainstream media is that members of the media, you know, they're more shills 
and an extension, you know, for the Democratic Party. So they don't care about you or the people. So Donald Trump can do something that is beneficial, foster peace with North Korea, cross over into the DMZ. But they're just going to be opposed to what he does, any and everything he does, because they are political hacks. They would have definitely given Obama credit for this while simultaneously criticizing Donald Trump. And look, you've got no disagreement from me there. That's true. The media are hacks and journalism is dead. But what this moron isn't telling you is that it's dead because people like him helped kill it because out of all the hacks you can list, nobody's a bigger hack, nobody's a bigger shill for a political party than Sean Hannity. But he won't tell you that when even people in his own network, his own colleagues are willing to admit, yeah, you know, we are going to give Trump credit for this when we absolutely would have called out Obama for doing it. I don't, I, of course they're going to attack him. That's what you would do. And, I, and let's be honest, if it were the adversary, uh, an adversary from your party on the other side doing it during you, we would do the same How thing. How dare Obama <laughs> meet with a dictator with no preconditions? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So if you're going to be concerned about political bias and shilling for political parties and call out media bias, you better clean up your own house first, Sean. Because no network is a bigger shill for any party, any extension of a political party than Fox News. And within that Fox News propaganda arm, you are the worst of the worst. You are absolutely unequivocally the worst of the worst. And a compilation put together by now this of Fox News and the way that they reacted to, you know, fostering peace between uh, Obama and Trump, it tells you everything you need to know. Would you, as president, meet with the leaders of a country like North Korea? Obama extraordinarily said, I'd meet with him. Senator Obama made his intentions crystal clear on the campaign trail. I will meet not just with our friends, but with our enemies. President Obama likes talking to dictators. He would meet with some of these madmen without any preconditions. You know, I'm going to reach out to these crazy people uh, around the world and try to get things done. Yeah. I think that's a mistake. Obama is bowing and scraping before dictators. What is Team Obama doing establishing formal contacts with these people? A remarkable turnaround in relations between two historic adversaries. The commander in chief's leadership is now leading to a major foreign policy breakthrough. Another stunning Donald Trump breakthrough. President Trump scoring a big win. It's time to celebrate a great victory when it happens. President Trump proves the experts wrong again and scores a stunning diplomatic triumph. How about this? The fact that all he wants is to get them back to the table as a precondition, sure. not I'll give up. If you give up your nuclear weapons, then we'll talk. Why would the administration think that this is a group they could do business with? Uh, you know, I have no idea. Those who hate us will always hate us. And the hatred for America is never going to go away. It is a definite win for the president. And it's a huge win for this country. It's breathtaking. It's audacious. It's bold. Uh, it will be historic. I'm juiced about it. It will be magnificent for the people of Korea. It will be magnificent for the table. world. Obama would personally negotiate with leaders of terrorist nations like Iran and North Korea without preconditions. Wow. The world will probably be a little bit safer. The media should be giving President Trump credit for that. I'm not sure there's any real discussing issues with Kim Jong-un. He may be the one president who would actually do this, who would go meet with the North Korean leader. Look, it's a bad idea for the president to speak to Kim Jong-un. Why wait till the end of May? Let's do this by the end of March. The current president truly believes that he's the chosen one, cannot deal with criticism. We are really in danger of living in a sort of pretty little dream world where Barack Obama thinks the power of his personality is going to have this incredible transformative impact on these crazy Kate, men. Kate, let me all interrupt. Over. President Trump made the decision himself to meet face to face with Kim Jong Un. This guy has a very unique quality of leadership. He is so charming. He can deal with people. He can get along with people. I think that this will only work out well. The idea, which has been fanciful from the start, that we could talk North Korea out of its nuclear weapons program. You cannot make such a promise, not when you're dealing with these madmen who do want to destroy America. Is he going to stop on his way in Oslo to get the Nobel Peace Prize? If it works, he should get the Nobel Peace Prize. It would be something. You give that man the Nobel Prize, there's no question. But let's be, I mean, the chances of that are right around zero, I think.
will always be fair and balanced, would not the left wing destroy Trump media? Quote, the media are nothing more than shills. Sean Hannity. (laughs) The irony just, you know, flew right over his head. Let's not pretend as if you're not included in that same category of all these other media shills. In fact, you're the worst offender here, Sean. Now, I want to stress, I'm not trying to debunk the notion that, you know, media aren't shills for political interests. Because I think that cable news pundits, these are owned by large corporations, multi-billion dollar companies. So, of course, there's a conflict of interest there. Of course, there are underlying biases and agendas that are being driven here. But with that being said, talk about the pot calling the kettle black. I mean, Sean Hannity, of all people, you should not be speaking out about this because what's the obvious rebuttal going to be? Look in the mirror, dipshit. So I'm just honestly um, a little bit taken aback that he'd have the confidence to say this so boldly and call out media bias while not being introspective about his own overt bias. And it's not even, you know, to say that Sean Hannity is biased, that would be an oversimplification. You could say that I'm biased because I talk about how I am a progressive and a democratic socialist and I'm supporting Bernie Sanders. So you can say that's political bias and I'm telling you my bias so you know, you know, the way that I think and how I'm influenced. But Sean Hannity isn't just biased. He's a shill. He is doing the bidding of Fox News' advertisers, which also happen to be donors to the Republican Party. So it's not just about political bias. This is about shilling. This is about a conflict of interest. You see, because even if Trump did something that goes against his own political biases that are inherent to his core ideology, he wouldn't speak about it. But for me, someone who tells you where I stand, if Bernie were president and he did something I disagreed with, In fact, I've already openly disagreed with him on issues like Israel-Palestine, reparations, drones. I call him out. And it's because there's a difference between bias and being an outright shill. And Sean Hannity is firmly in the shill camp. So he has the nerve to call out anyone else's political bias.